Okay, hi everyone. So today I will talk about uh, some machine learning algorithms and how we approach architecture in here in JAD Academy. So, so I will briefly go over this presentation and move over to this presentation and try to explain the digital world uh, in terms of like what is the approach and what are the things that we can do and what are the possibilities that we are trying to explore in here. So uh, like look at this one. So we see architecture uh, like in the beginning it was just hand drawing and doing something with hand and so we evolved from doing these kind of sketches into like drawing a single line like this. So everything is becoming much more digital in terms of the tools that architects use and now we are using BIM to kind of show what are what is our building and what are the data that are augmented within the project and you can all access them uh, with regards in the software such as Rhino or AutoCAD or whatever you use. And then we try to parameterize these uh, components of the building. So you can see that we can create a box with two sliders and like the box component in here. And we can also use code. So this code is just describing a box that has two, two and three in X, Y, Z coordinates. So architects are much more kind of using these computational tools to generate the geometry that they want and so actually by creating our own data set we can become the designer of the program and try to choose the right set of images so that our design process will be like kind of in an in our way of approach so uh, this one is kind of like an example that i want to show you so in here you are seeing like an exporting from a, a mac computer to like a gif if you want to like export your presentation as a GIF. So in the right, you can see like the tool that uh, Apple has developed. And in the left, you can see the code to generate that. And in the left, you have much more control over what you are writing. You can control the resolution. You can control which parameters that you want. And it's all about intuition because in the right, like they developed the interface for us to do these things. And so, I want to talk about intuition and like how the software generated these. So you can see the evolution of the Photoshop toolbar. So when you look at that, it's much more intuitive because we are kind of used to that. But if you have nothing, no information in the beginning, you have to go to the manual and look all of these slides and try to guess what tool is using which component. And actually, intuition is something like we really like as humans and we are trying to go like on that side as much as we can. So like even in the Logitech like controllers, you see that they have like much more tools in the left and like they are just simplifying everything throughout the time for human usage. And I just want to show an example in here. So the first thing that we do as, I don't know, kids, we try to, when we learn math, we just write one plus one equals two. And the calculator is the first tool that we use as, I don't know, the digital machine that can do any calculation and kind of a simple like kind of a complex uh, thing so we have this calculator but right now we have our iPhones and we are kind of doing everything what we want in our iPhone but uh, like we can approach the design like this so if we think that like just typing one plus one equals two is the manual design which is architect used to do by hand like maybe 10 20 years ago or maybe right now and we look at the calculator as the design or digital tool that we are using. And we can look at the iPhone calculator as something like a computational tool. And then we can increase the complexity and become like a developer level where you kind of write your own code and try to create the components for people that could use what you did. And so this is kind of the approach that I'm trying to follow in here at JD Academy that we are trying to teach people like the complete understanding and complete navigation all over the system where they can try to do that manual or with digital design. And so this is kind of our approach. And so in here you are seeing a pix to pix neural network, which is kind of trying to guess what are the edges of the items that you are putting in the input data and like trying to guess what is what will be the output data and this is really interesting for architects because I don't know maybe in five to ten years we don't even have a render engine because 
I just want to, I can just create a data set of the picture that I want my output render to look so it can kind of mimic the style that I want to cho choose. And so this is kind of the like the digital approach that we are trying to use. And I will briefly talk about what is deep learning and what are the, some algorithms that we use. And then uh, I can show you what we did here using those algorithms. So uh, this is like the famous artist Rafik Anadol's uh, works uh, using Stalgan algorithms. And you can see a data set that has been kind of imported in 3D space. And we talked about some of the augmentation techniques. It's like you have Stalgan, you have pix to pix you have, I don't know, CycleGAN, and you have kind of these data motion and data augmentation techniques also. And I will just briefly go over what is the artificial neural network. Actually, neural network is, is really similar to the human brain because when a human brain wants to do something, it just releases a chemical and it's equal to one. It's either released or not released, but like all of these different combinations that you can create in your brain are the kind of resulting uh, action that has been executed in the body. And neural networks are kind of working in a similar level of complexity because it has these neurons that can, it can open or close like one or zeros and then it just kind of learns how to learn or what your intention is to teach to that system and so this is like the general overview of the neural networks and these networks are kind of used as classifiers in much more case in more cases it's used as a classifier here you can see like a picture of uh, Sagrada Familia and the Notre Dame Cathedral, Cathedral and you are trying to teach both of them you are giving these different pictures of the system and it tries to understand what are the key components that bring that system in that level of arrangement let's say and by creating our own data set we can try to create what will be the output of the uh, let's say result and so here is an evolutionary analysis of the pictures and like what uh, these artificial neural networks can generate. In 2014, you are seeing like it's all mu much more like simple and black and white. But throughout the 2020, you can see like these pictures are, by the way, they are not like real humans, but they're artificially generated people. And the reason it's because it's happening like this is because the GPU that we are using right now is much more powerful than we used to do and NVIDIA and like all of these uh, companies are really researching on these areas to how to optimize the workflows and how to uh, do our comp computation cheap and uh, kind of faster and like we have much more examples in here that I won't show you but this guy Ian Goodfellow just discovered this generative adversarial network in 2016 and then it become much more popular throughout the time because it's really easy to use these systems. You just import the code in your system or use different kind of, I don't know, we are using TensorFlow, we are using Keras. These are all libraries that we are using and or uh, gradient descent algorithms. So the, I will just briefly explain the, how these things work. Okay, so you have two networks in these uh, algorithms. One of them is called discriminator and other one is generator. So one of them, like they both of them jobs is to try to uh, deceive the other side. So let's say I'm like printing money and this is the real money and this is the fake money. And the, this goes to discriminator and it says, okay, this money is fake. You generated it wrong. So let's generate again. So it generates again and again, like let's say, I don't know, maybe 5,000 times. And after that, it starts to generate something uh, much more easier and much more real than the discriminator can distinguish between the, let's say, fake and the real. And after some point, the generator becomes much more smart that it can deceive the generator that something fake is real. So the process becomes like really interesting in there. And so let's show some of the results that we did using these techniques. So. These are not the final versions, but you can see them. So in here we sketched uh, our principal architect, you can now draw the sketch over the last 30 years, and we tried to embed them in a system 
and this system kind of analyzed the patterns that he generated throughout all of the year and tried to mimic his style and then we projected all of these different possibilities into, into a latent space where uh, all of the possibilities are over there but you just kind of need to create a vector to, in which direction you want to go and this is like a random walking vector in 3D space taught by his sketches and this is like the I think the interesting thing in, is he, in here is not what it is, but what it could be, because architecture is always about not the thing that has been built, but the other possibilities that were hidden, but not come to life. And in these experimentation, experimentations, we are trying to guess and analyze what could be the possible different solutions to the same problem that uh, we could generate. And right now, we did this by using artificial intelligence and now I'm taking this video footage which is 522 by 522 and trying to upscale this image by using another artificial intelligence to give much more resolution and much more detail and yeah I think that's it so it's so what kind of like what we did throughout the last month on neural networks and deep learning algorithms and our little experimentation. Like we did many more, but this is the one that mattered most, I think. Uh, so this was the workshop that we did in GAD Academy and each student uh, kind of, I can show you their works as well. Each student kind of choose their own data set that they want to be curator of and they tried their own style in a way that they, it was kind of like a, it was experimentational, but I can also show some of the results of the students. <coughs> so here you can see another uh, neural network trained on superficial art architectural images. So the goal in here is just to experiment with these digital tools and try to understand and try to see what could it become. Because when we see at the architecture, we have like these digital turns in architecture where like I think like for 30 or 40 years ago when Greg Lynn used, I don't know, digital approaches in architecture, it was phenomenal and everyone was kind of really curious and interested about that. And now we have the age of the AI within architecture and in JD Academy, we are trying to understand these systems and like look how we can benefit from these systems in a kind of speculative way. And I think really that's really important. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. See you in another video.